right guys, what is going on? I told you in the last little uh, clip here, we do a video on, you know, kind of what I'm, what I'm running for uh, predators, right? So in Pennsylvania at night, uh, well, in, Pen in Pennsylvania, we hunt predators at night, right? And it's in the winter as well. So it's, it's pretty bitter, cold conditions at times. Um, so we run lights uh, for these guys, but I thought for this, um, obviously I got the 204 here, I'll get to that. Um, I thought I would start with uh, clothing, okay? <clears throat> I'm a little bit old school. Uh, I, don't, uh, I don't get into the compression wear at all, uh, like Under Armour, for example. And I have some of it, and I've used it for years, but I, I've come to not like it. I don't like it. Uh, it makes my leg hair hurt. I mean, it's just uncomfortable after you wear that stuff for a whole day. Um, and the other thing that I noticed the kind of the downside of that is if you get, you know, you, you got a tree stand and, you know, your, your pack and your bow or whatever gun like this, right? And you, you have a little bit of a hike. If you get just the slightest bit of a sweat, just the littlest bit of sheen on you of sweat, that stuff will free. I mean, I freeze when I get a little sweat going with that stuff. Um, so it's like not having it at all. I mean, anytime you sweat, you're going to pay, but, um, anyway, I run uh, layers and I run cotton. Like I wear sweatpants. Okay. Sweatpants, the Carhartt outers, either bibs or, or, uh, just brush pants sort of thing. Rubber boots for everything. I'm going to show you that. Um, and same thing. I, I always wear usually this, this black fleece and just like a, uh, a light, uh, hood, like camo hood, like my art, it's my archery jacket. So I wear my archery hood. Um, and that, that's probably, uh, that's pretty much it. And gloves as well. Uh, pretty much it for, um, you know, until you get the temperatures that are down in the teens. Now, after we get into the teens here, uh, then I got to break out uh, some other stuff. So I've got, um, I've got some big, I should have grabbed my gauntlets. I got some big gauntlet uh, gloves that are heavy duty uh, for winter. Those things are awesome. Um, I like those because if you have to reach into like a stream or something like that uh, after a raccoon or whatever, um, you know, those, those gauntlet gloves do a pretty good job of keeping you dry. I always wear a neck uh, gaiter. Uh, even in the summertime, I wear a light one, right? I just like keeping the sun off me, keeping the bugs off me. In the winter, obviously, it's for heat. Uh, wear a nice, uh, this is kind of a wool. That's the thing. When we get down past the teens, I'm a, I'm a huge believer uh, in wool. Okay. And the reason why I'm a believer in it is because I tried everything and I'm telling you that a wool coat, jacket, overalls, whatever. Um, you just can't, in my opinion, you cannot beat it. It can't be beat. Um, I have, a, so I have like a wool ish, uh, type, uh, knit hat. But I brought this jacket out, and this thing is like not the lightest thing either. It's made by Columbia. This is really good stuff. Uh, it's maybe like, it's like quarter inch thick maybe, something like that, uh, wool. Um, no wind gets through this. Uh, you don't get wet in this. Uh, but what I really like about it is you can sit in a tree stand like all day. Like when, you're, when I'm hunting the rut in PA, sit in the tree stand from before the sun comes up and you don't get down until the sun goes down sort of thing. And you're stuck in that tree stand all day long. This stuff here in the, in the middle of winter kind of thing, this stuff here, uh, allow you to do that and be comfortable all day. It's super boring, but there's nothing you can do about that, but you can be warm. And I'm telling you, wool will get it done. Um, the, one of the first coyotes, uh, a buddy of mine shot, we were calling one night, it was like, Right, right around zero, maybe like minus four or something like that, and no wind. I mean, we were we were making our own like cloud. It was crazy. Um, he was froze solid, and I was trying to stay awake because I was just, just so warm in this stuff. It was uh, it was really nice. Um, so I mentioned we hunt at night, so we run lights, right? Now I run uh, Wicked, or they're called Wicked lights. And I think this one's a four o three i. Is the scan light here? I don't know what these guys. I don't know what the, the names are. It's only red. Okay, they make uh, these lights that have uh, a knob for uh, red, green, or white light. But I only run red, uh, a little bit cheaper that way. But I mean, these things are comfortable. 
uh, batteries for these. Uh, that's why I really like the Wicked lights is uh, not only are they super powerful lights, uh, but the batteries you run in the kill light are the same as the ones you run uh, in the scan light. I don't have the batteries in the scan light here, but they're interchangeable. So you don't have to have uh, two you know, different size batteries. And I've got eight batteries. So I, I mean, to hunt, it takes three. And I've got a bunch of spares. Uh, and these things, this, this guy is good to, well, I used to say about 300 yards, but I was in a field uh, hunting last week it was 500 yards long and I could see the back of it. Okay. These lights are nuts. I mean, they're pretty good. Um, I think I got these off of Amazon. Um, uh, but anyways, that's where I run wicked lights. Now there's a lot of good ones, coyote cannons and, uh, hog sniper or hogs or whatever are all pretty good, but I run the wickeds. I just like them. Not, not that they're any better. It's just, it's what I started with and it's what I prefer now. So anyways, you can see these guys can be super bright. I mean, that's in the middle of the night. That that's, that's 500 yards. You can see like daylight. Okay. It's nuts. Um, anyways, wicked lights, uh, the call I run. <clears throat> so I've got a lucky duck riot. Uh, that's a great call. Now, I haven't been doing this that long, all right? But when I researched all these calls, electronic calls, this one kind of uh, had all the stuff that I wanted. It was small. It had a decoy built into it. And it had a really good, it has a really good selection of sounds. Now, Fox Pro, right, is actually a Pennsylvania company, all right? And I didn't know that. Or I probably would have bought it, right? But I'm not unhappy with this Lucky Duck at all. Uh, now these guys are geared more towards, I think, uh, coyotes because there's a ton of coyote sounds on here. Uh, it's great, but all kinds of bird sounds, uh, prey sounds, coyote sounds, and I'm talking, you know, anywhere from like lone howls to fight sounds to distress sounds to mating sound. I mean, whatever you want. I mean, as far as coyotes go, this thing has got it. Super loud. I never have any trouble with this thing in the, in the real cold. Um, and the other thing is too, the, the other thing I like about it is the sound doesn't sound like crap. You know, when the battery starts to go dead, some of the calls, the, the sound starts to degrade, right? This thing, the sound stays, uh, it basically stays at the same quality level, but when the batteries are done, it just dies. It's the same way with the lights. The lights run for like full brightness, until the batteries are dead. In other words, it can't supply enough voltage or current and it just drops it all together. It's like done, right? It's not going to go dim. Same thing with this. It's not going to go quiet. It's not going to start like rever reverbing or anything like that. It's just going to stop working, right? Which I kind of like that. Decoy is nice, although hunting at night, I never get to use this thing. Um, but yeah, it's nice. It's light. I got a little carabiner on it for carrying this thing in and out of the woods. And it has a uh, it has a really nice remote. It's got a nice backlit uh, remote on this thing. Plenty of options. You got decoy control, and it's got some functions you can set here for like situational stuff. Uh, you know, like for instance, when I when I pop a coyote, right? Uh, I'll play F2 immediately after I shoot, and that is a coyote distress sound. So I don't have to try to fish through the menu. I just hit the button, and it just goes. It just starts playing. Okay. And uh, it's really a pretty good call. Buttons are a little small uh, for trying to fish around this with, with big heavy winter gloves on, but it's not enough to complain about. All right. So the big addition uh, this year, the big change for me this year is this tripod. Now I'd never used a tripod before. Um, I just used a single, like an Allen telescoping, you know, kind of a monopod. Uh, and I actually used to take a chair out, which I've learned that's a major no-no. Uh, you can only see 180 degrees in a chair. Uh, when you go out predator hunting at night, um, especially with you know, eastern coyotes that are uh, smart and tough and, you know, scarce, you know, it's hard to find them things sometimes. Uh, 
they like they love to circle around. So I mean, you, you need to be able to see all around. So standing is the way to do it. So that's why I got the tripod this year. Now, this is an Interrail. Uh, this is an RT ADC, which means nothing to me. I just looked at how much uh, basically uh, weight can it hold and how tall it was because a bunch of guys I know have like bog pods and death grips and all this stuff, you know, and that, those are really popular, uh, but they're really short too. And I am like six foot seven, six foot eight. Uh, I need something tall. This thing will extend all the way uh, and up to my eyeballs. Uh, this is really tall, um, uh, which is great. It's carbon fiber. The whole thing folded up is, is relatively small and it only weighs four pounds. Um, so the tripod is excellent choice. It does have a, a rubber uh, boots on it now, but you can take those off and it's got uh, stainless steel spikes in the bottom of it. So there's that option too, if you're hunting on like frozen ground or something. Um, what else? Oh, so I've outfitted this thing with uh, this ball. It's got a ball joint on it. Okay. Now I like this better than like a, like a, uh, a death grip, something that grips your stock because I don't know, I just don't feel like I would ever get that tight enough or there would be some play or something like that that I just would not like, right? So, you know, again, this is a, this is a buy once, cry once kind of thing. And this stuff's not cheap, but it's, it's very nice, right? So uh, this is a 36, so this is the N36, so it must mean it's a 36, or 36 millimeter ball, but it's fully adjustable here. Let me dump that thing. Fully adjustable, but you can see, I mean, moving this thing around uh, is a piece of cake. And the best part about it is, is, uh, you know, it's just like quarter turn here on this guy. And it's, it's like, it's not going to move at all. I can walk away from the gun, be hands free. And that's what I need to be able to run the lights, run the call, you know, stuff like that. So from previous videos, you know, I put this barreled action that I built in this old SPS stock. Okay, it, this is not, I've done nothing to this barrel channel. It's, this stock is on the barrel, okay. Uh, but it's a Remington varmint taper stock. It's rigid enough for this thing to not affect it too much, right? Which I need to get some data on that and, and free float this thing for the summer. But I'm probably going to restock it. But anyways, it doesn't seem to bother too much. Now, I've got a Picatinny rail that I've literally just screwed into this thing right? With like wood screws, because I don't care about the stock at all, right? And I've got an Arca uh, Swiss, uh, this is actually a camera mount, but it's an Arca Swiss uh, rail on this guy. And obviously the, the, the adapter here on the ball joint. Um, and that is basically right below the recoil lug, right? So I didn't want it out here because I'm imagining all the, you know, the moment that you would create out here with all this weight, right, would probably do something to the accuracy. This, this thing is mounted as close as I can get uh, to the recoil lug. I never touched this thing out here anyway, so. And so far, I have had no problems uh, hitting what I'm aiming at. Um, I, I'm not saying that I don't miss, right? I was on a nice little shot, uh, what was it, like a 12 animal shot string, uh, 12 in a row uh, this year, and I missed a red fox, so. Now I'm on a seven shot string and, um, you know, it misses happen. But anyways, uh, that's the tripod. Um, you know, this gun is not a light carry and it didn't get any lighter, uh, by, by adding this, uh, this new scope. So this is the, I got the strike Eagle on here now. Uh, and after taking it to the range today and sighting everything in doing all that, uh, I actually realized the crosshairs are a true crosshairs where they, there's not a gap in the middle. I was mentioning that earlier in the clip. They actually is a, a very fine crosshair in the middle. Um, my overall uh, first first kind of like uh, uh, impression of the scope is I love this thing. It's, it's a really good scope. The glass is really clear. I actually think it's clearer than my Diamondback. Um, so although I don't think this scope is as uh, well I don't want to say it's not as nice. Uh, it's it's very nice scope, uh, but the Diamondback's a first uh, focal plane, so that is a little bit different uh, animal, right? For a second focal plane scope, this thing is excellent. It's awesome, right? I'm very happy with this. I think G is really going to appreciate this thing. It's four to twenty-four by fifty. So 
Uh, got that all mounted up and sighted in today. Uh, shooting really well. Speaking of shooting really well, so the reloads I've got for this guy, uh, if you watched the previous videos, right? Uh, 35 grain uh, burger hollow points is what I've been running. Now, what I've noticed is these things are super, super aggressive. Uh, some of the reds that I brought home uh, have been just uh, destroyed. It's been bad. Uh, we're talking like baseball size holes in these things. So <clears throat> luckily fur is not worth anything this year. So I've got a problem processing all this myself, putting up my own fur and, and I'm going to do something with that, you know, tan it and do something with it. So I'm the only one who's going to have to deal with the stitching and, and all that. But what I've decided to do, and, and again, this is a 35 grain uh, burger hollow point, uh, 3850 feet per second, uh, which is toned down. They, these guys will go 4100, 4200 feet per second. I've got it running at 3850 to try to not blow stuff up. Uh, and it's not doing a great job at that. Super accurate, but not, uh, not doing a great job. It's, it, uh, it's really hard on fur. So I'm going back to, uh, I'm going to run a uh, 39 grain uh, Sierra Blitz King. Right, and everybody's like, oh, Blitz King, you know. Uh, I actually shot a small groundhog uh, or woodchuck with this thing at the end of summer, and it didn't do too bad, okay. And I haven't shot, uh, I haven't put any fur on the ground. I'm going to try this out tonight, but try this guy out. Now, the other thing worth mentioning is I've got 23 and a half grains of Benchmark uh, in this, uh, and I took that out, sighted it in today, and it just... I just drew it together really quick. It's about 3450 uh, to 3500 feet per second. And uh, it shot a half inch, it's shooting half inch groups. Now I've had this thing on the range uh, three times and all three times it's shooting a half inch or better. Uh, so I'm gonna try this thing out tonight. We'll see how it does on some fur. I need some snow, Uncle Jim, give me some snow, man. Give me some snow, I need it. Because I've got all my, I've got a bunch of spots all shot out now, at least I think, uh, and I want some snow, so I'm going to do some tracking, um, see what's around. Uh, but yeah, it's 60 degrees today. It's crazy. I'm gonna go out there and I'm be sweaty. Uh, so, but but it's good for taking G out. The warm weather is good for for the kids. But uh, I need some snow. Anyways, guys, it's kind of a cheese ball video here, but, uh, you know, with the reloading supplies the way they are, um, you know, it's, it's going to be tough to do like full workups, you know, it just is. Um, I have, uh, I have a pretty decent inventory. Uh, the way things are going now will be good for a long time, but, uh, because everything is kind of so scarce still, uh, I'm not in any big hurry to just uh, rush out there and, and burn it all down. So, <clears throat> uh, I mean, I don't, know what, I don't know what your opinion is on it. My opinion is it's very disappointing to see reloading supplies basically end up like toilet paper, right? Uh, you got some hoarding going on, in, in, but I don't see more guys showing up at the range, uh, you know, with the reloads. So, I think it's just a matter of, of buying when you can buy, I guess. Uh, anyways, that's that. There's nothing we can do about it. But as for me, I'll be hunting and I'll be enjoying it. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope you found some value in this. And this is strictly, all of this is strictly my opinion and or based on my experiences, you know, of hunting. And, and uh, you know, I, I, if anybody finds any value in this, great. Um, if you have any questions or comments or whatever, uh, leave me a note in the comment section. I love that stuff. Uh, yeah, feels good to do a YouTube video again. Hey, thanks a lot.